You know what today is. Today is the day that you learn about what happened this week in drone news. The first thing I want to talk about is the company, the French company Parrot, that actually released a new drone or is going to release next month a new drone called the Anafi FPV. The next thing is the FAA. The FAA worked with some partners and they completed some very successful demos uh, when it comes to UTM. We'll talk about what UTM means in a minute. And then we'll talk about the, the trades that hit DJI pretty badly and uh, increased the price of the drone. And then finally, I want to talk about Inner Drone, which is going on this week in Las Vegas and give you a little bit more details about this. So let's get started. First thing, French company Parrot, uh, they just launched a new version of their Anafi drone, which is the Anafi FPV. Now they're joining the FPV crowd a few weeks after DJI released some, uh, some FPV material, the, the goggles. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. Now, uh, if you're not familiar, Parrot, they have this Anafi drone and um, they've, they've made several versions over the years and, and one of them had a thermal camera on it uh, and then one of them now has an FPV combo attached to it. Now, it, you get the drone, which is the same drone, and then a pair of goggles at the same time. Now, this is going to be priced at $7.99. The drone in itself actually sells for $6.99. So for $100 more, you get actually the FPV kit, which is actually pretty cool. So I'll put a link down in the comments where you can see uh, some more details about this package. And then uh, you'll see a little bit of the video right here. Um, some of the features of the drone in itself is a 21 megapixel camera. It's got a 4K 30 frame per second uh, capabilities for videos. The cool thing about this drone is that it has a 180 degree uh, full tilt gimbal. So you can look all the way down, but you can also look all the way up with a three stable, uh, three axis stabilization uh, for the gimbal. And then it's got a 2.8 lossless zoom on the HD and a 1.4 lossless zoom on the 4K. So it's kind of like a, a Mavic uh, zoom in that level. And uh, it's pretty lightweight, 320 grams, and it's designed to fly for about 25 minutes. Uh, one of the cool thing I thought about it, I've never flown one. Uh, I, I think actually it would be pretty cool to test it and see what that, that drone looks like and, and maybe give you guys a review. Um, the cool thing about it is it's uh, chargeable with USB-C, which I think is pretty interesting if you're going to travel. I do a lot of backpacking actually with my drone uh, where I go places that are not easy where you can bring a big drone. That's why I have a, a Mavic and a Mavic 2. And this actually looks like the perfect drone for this. You can recharge it on the fly without having to have a big charging uh, setup. So uh, eventually I'd like to uh, see if I can try this thing. Uh, if you fly this drone, let me know. Let me know what you think about the Anafi and, uh, and in general Parrot, if you have any of their drones. And uh, I want to hear about you. I want to I hear your, your comments. Next thing I want to talk about is kind of a big deal, actually. This, this I feel like, didn't get really the press that it's supposed to get. Um, and, and maybe I'm just too excited about it, but um, the, the FAA worked with some partners uh, to work on trying to demonstrate what a UTM system can do in the future. Now, UTM, for those of you that are not familiar, the U stands for UAS and TM, Traffic Management System. So. This is a, an air traffic management that is trying to incorporate um, manned aircraft and unmanned aircraft. And uh, as a manned pilot and an unmanned pilot, the one thing that I really want to do is bring the two communities together and, and try for everyone to understand what everybody else is doing. I think unmanned pilots in general have a very poor understanding of what manned aircraft pilots do in the aircraft and vice versa. I think manned aircraft pilots have a very poor understanding as well of what goes on on the ground, what is required for approval and all these things. Now, this is not the system that is going to necessarily do this, but this is the system that's going to keep people aware of what is going on in the air and how we can share the airspace, which is extremely critical for, uh, for the industry. Now, what they did is they actually had three different sites and they did three different testing in three different places. And this is part of the, uh, the UTM, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the pilot program that they have, the UTPP, I think it's called. And uh, there is a place in Grand Forks, there was a place in uh, Virginia, and then there was a place in Las Vegas. And they did three different types of testing. And what basically what they did is they, they, they set up scenarios where this uh, a few different drone pilots were doing things. Some things like uh, flying for recreational purposes, flying for under part 107. 
and and then they would throw something into it. They would throw a, a, a crisis, and they would throw um, like a, a medivac, for example. So that's one of the example they give. There was a medical helicopter that needed to fly through some of the path, and the way that they did it is they would send signals to the drone pilots and uh, and kind of have them go down on the ground. They talk about automated UAS flights as well that would basically get uh, rerouted to go away from the medivac. The test was very conclusive, very successful, and uh, I think it's going to be a, a good ground base for the future for the FAA to, uh, to, to put this into place. So this is a topic that I think is very hot right now, very interesting. I see a lot of stuff going on in Europe. Um, there's a company uh, called Unifly that is doing a lot of stuff in Europe for this, uh, this kind of uh, a traffic deconfliction, if you want. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the US and how this progresses. I'm sure with Interdrone this week, uh, there's gonna be a lot of discussions about this. So it's one of the big topic with the FA and one of the big thing they're trying to, to move forward with. So look for more information on this in the future. If this is something that interests you, I highly recommend you look into it. We're still at the infancy in a way of what's gonna happen in the future. And I think it's, it's quite exciting. Something not so exciting, if you're a DJI customer, is the new tariffs that were put in place across the board uh, by, the, uh, by the White House in September are basically hitting the shelves now. So uh, what we've seen actually with DJI is an increase of 13%, and that includes uh, some drones like the Mavic 2, for example, which is a pretty popular drone. Now, the, the Mavic 2 went from $14.99 when it came out to $17.99 now on the shelf. So um, this is really all I'm going to talk about. I don't want to make this political. I don't really care about politics, quite frankly, uh, between you and I. Uh, I think this is just something that we have to live with. It's happening, and, uh, and we're going to be paying for it. So uh, whether we agree with it or we don't, uh, it's, uh, it's hitting the, the pocket of drone pilots. So my question to you, and, and try to keep it civil. You guys are really good, by the way, at keeping comments very civil. I appreciate that. Uh, but is this something that you've experienced recently with any DJI product or any other product for that matter? It doesn't have to be DJI. Or um, is it something that is going to deter you from purchasing from DJI in the future or maybe even just purchasing a drone? So I kind of want to hear your perspective on this and, uh, and see where you guys stand and how do you think this is going to affect the, uh, the industry? I mean, DJI is not a small part of our industry. They, they do provide a lot of drones out there and, uh, and a lot of purchasers. So let me know what you think, how this is going to affect our, uh, our little world. Another cool thing going on this week, it's Innerdrone. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make time to go. It's in Vegas, which is fairly close to where I live. It's about a four hour drive. Um, not that I really enjoy Vegas, but for this, I would actually make an exception. Uh, there were several keynote speakers. Now I'm recording this on Thursday. So yesterday was Wednesday when it opened. Uh, the, uh, the CEO of uh, Precision Hawk was there talking and then the FAA Deputy Administrator, uh, Mr. Ewell, uh, Ewell, I guess I'm saying this correctly, uh, was out there talking. Now, uh, what I thought was interesting from the, the reports that I saw was the discussion on the drone uh, advisory committee. Now, if you're not familiar with the drone advisory committee, uh, this is something where we have groups of people meeting across the industry and kind of discussing what should happen in the future with drones. And uh, these committees are in, are in charge of five different areas. One of them is remote ID. I've mentioned remote ID in the past. Uh, I made a full video to explain remote ID. Um, the other one was beyond VLOS, visual line of sight flights. That's another big area that the FAA is uh, concentrating on. Another one is the waiver process. I've asked you a couple of weeks ago to provide some feedback on the waiver process. Uh, the FAA is trying to make it, I hope, easier. Uh, I have full hope that this is what's going to happen. And then Another two topics that I don't talk about very much. One is a counter program to counter uh, drone attacks and, and, and bad drones basically from, uh, from doing, well, stupid stuff or bad stuff. And then the last one is a public and private partnership. So these are the five areas that have committees that are meeting on a regular basis and trying to make this world move forward. So um, not... <laughs> Most of my viewers, I think most of you guys, are not going to be involved in doing this, but I want you to pay attention to these topics because obviously this is where the FAA thinks that there are some possible changes that are going to come in the future. So uh, we'll see as more stuff comes out this, uh, this week for Innerdrone. I'll, I'll keep these for next week and give you an update on what happens there. And hopefully next week I'll be able to be out there and giving you some, uh, some live, live updates on what is actually going on at Innerdrone. If you are at Innerdrone, I want to hear from you. I want to tell me what you are seeing. Do you enjoy? Uh, is there anything that you saw that you think is newsworthy or is um, 
changing the industry maybe. So let me know in the comments uh, or if you want to go in the future, uh, what's preventing you from going. And uh, for me, it's just time. Unfortunately, I have other commitments this week that I, I couldn't get away from. So this is it. This week is kind of a short one. Please, as always, leave comments. You guys are awesome. You leave a ton of comments. I love interacting with you. I love uh, that now we are 15 weeks into this. This is the 15th episode, 15 weeks in a row. And uh, starting to get people that come back on a regular basis. So I'm really excited. This really motivates me to make more of these. And uh, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel. We're growing. We're uh, coming on to almost 1,000 subscribers, which is pretty exciting. Uh, really started reviving this channel uh, a couple months ago. So we've grown fairly quickly. And uh, can't wait to see what else uh, comes out of all this. So um, as always, leave your comments and uh, fly safe. And hopefully you're flying the Drone Maneuvers Guide. There's a lot of people that purchased the course and are out there telling me that they're flying. Uh, some of them are struggling. Uh, I mean, I struggle too when I did some of these maneuvers and a lot of people are excited about the course. So uh, if you haven't bought it, just look in the comments. I put a link. Uh, it's still fairly cheap. I'm still running a, a special right now because I want more and more people to just become better pilots. So take a look in the link and uh, that's it. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.